Hi knitters, welcome to the Knitty McPearly podcast episode 126. A week late. It's very good to be back. I really missed you guys, like an inordinate amount. So I'm very happy to be back. This is Devin Ventry. I'm your host. You can find me online at knittymcpearly.com. I'm on Instagram as knittymcpearly. And if you want to email me, I am Devin at knittymcpearly.com. Knit one, pray one. <laughs> this mug is from um, Colby's Little Flowers over on Etsy, in case you uh, don't have one and want one. It's so good to be back. Like when you take a week off, so much happens because that's two whole weeks between podcasts. So I have a million things to talk about today. All right, progress and shop news. So one of the biggest things that happened was my Vesper sweater release. Remember this sweater? It took me a while to release it. And there are lots of reasons for that. Um, I do a lot of things and that slows down my pattern production. I used to, when my business was just knitting patterns, I could crank those puppies out. But now that the business has extended to yarn and accessories and other things like that, uh, it slows me down on the pattern front. And also, it's an interesting thing about this sweater because it is so simple that I underestimated the complexity. <clears throat> and a lot of that came out in the test. So my original pattern... I guess the best way to say it is I had it go too long and I didn't cinch it in enough at the waist. And so if you look at some of the tester sweaters, they knit it as it was originally written, particularly this one by Ghidra, who is an amazing knitter. Everything she does looks beautiful. Um, and her sweater is gorgeous and I absolutely love it, but it is not the silhouette that I was going for. So one of the great things that came out of this test knit, which was unique, I don't think I've ever had a test knit yield this many changes to the pattern before, is that it really helped. Um, this is a unique silhouette and I just had never designed anything like this before. And so in this situation, the test was a huge help. I personally love the way all of the tester sweaters came out. I think they were beautiful. Some of them changed the pattern and they helped me to say, you know, I did this. I, you know, tweaked it this way to make it what I wanted. Uh, other people knit it as written and it came out great. Like I loved it. You know, it, it was all fine, but I wanted it to look a certain way. And I think that the, the final pattern that came out really reflects that. So um, anyway, that pattern is available and it is free. So... You can knit that in fingering weight or lace weight yarn. Um, I alternate them. Um, you know, there it is. A lot of people downloaded it. It was super popular, of course, because it was a free sweater pattern. And it's unique, I think. You know, some people looked at it and were like, that's too 80s for me or too 70s or whatever. That's kind of what I love about it. I think it's a really cool silhouette. It's got that kind of bat wing style. So um, I thought it was really fun to knit. It gets long towards the end because you're doing these really, really long rows, uh, but then you cinch it in and the sleeves are done really quick because there's so much sleeve in the bat wing that you, you're, you're knitting as the whole circumference. Um, but I think they came out really, really good. So many beautiful, beautiful uh, tester finished products. This one is by Amy, who she's another one. Everything she does is beautiful. <clears throat> she used my Freetown fingering, which is, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry, it's grass pollen right now, <clears throat> which is um, an organic single ply, amazingly soft yarn. Uh, and I, I forget, I'm not looking at the picture right now, but the colors she used are frost and barrel. And then she did Bosque on the cuffs and the waistband. And I just love that combination so much. I love that she put that together. But anyway, she used the Freetown fingering and the Surrey silk, which uh, was, an, it was just an amazing combination. It's a delicate sweater. So, so beautiful. She said it's the softest thing she's ever knit. Um, so anyway. Oh, Wool and Honey, which is a big yarn store somewhere. I don't know where it is, but they featured it in their newsletter, I guess, as a, you know, a way to promote, you know, to sell their own yarn, like, oh, come buy yarn to make this sweater. Here's a free pattern. 
And I thought that was great. I loved that they included me. That was so nice. A lovely podcast watcher sent it to me saying, have you seen this? Usually when that happens, I have not seen it. So if you see it somewhere and you are, you have a minute and you want to send it to me, I would love that because otherwise I would never know. So that was really nice. Um, my gilded sweater is currently in testing. And ironically, it's a more complicated sweater, but I've had like zero issues on the test. All of the testers are like, this pattern is great. It's working up wonderfully. Here are my pictures. It's just been amazing. So sometimes you go into something thinking it's going to be easy and it's not and vice versa. And that kind of happened all at the same time for me. Uh, also, we have our faux set along. Did you notice? I am wearing my faux set. This is not what I wore to church this morning. I came home and changed because it's kind of cold. Like it's May, but it's still kind of cold. So anyway, I did mine in, I did Poirot, which is my new deep purple as color A. Color B is Morel, and that's uh, this part here. And this this section here is the one that you can lengthen if you would like to have a full length top. So color B is the one that you need more of if you want it to be full length. And then Bosque is my color C. And color C is the one that is the textured section across the bust. So it took me two weeks to knit my faux set and I don't have a lot of spare time. So it knits itself, Colleen. I'm talking to you. Colleen doubts me, but it does. <laughs> It really does. Like it just, it's so much fun. You're always changing colors and textures. The only part that's slow, we got two bobble rounds and then we've got this color B section where it's just stocking up. But even that is fast because it's only this much unless you lengthen it. And even then it's still not very much. So anyway, I extended the faux set along. In my So Here's What Happened today, I'm going to tell you the whole story of the Dubrovnik DK debacle, which is just a pure alliteration masterpiece. <laughs> but anyway, um, because I, the faucet along was way more successful than I expected it to be. For me, it was going to be just a little kind of a placeholder in my creative life of, you know, well, I have a few weeks before all the May stuff kicks up. So I'll just, you know, add in a little knit along and everyone in the world wanted to join, which was amazing. I love it so much. And I had a great sale on yarn, which is still going on. You can still get the discount on the yarn, but um, the, the DK is backed up at the mill. So that is, you can order it now as a pre-order and it will ship later. And the code to get 20% off the Dubrovnik DK is Faucet Along 2023. If you want to order it now, that's fine. If you want to order it later, that's fine. Whatever. If you've already ordered it and it hasn't shipped yet, it's because that's that group of yarn that I'm waiting on. So I'll, I'll tell that, that full story in a minute. But anyway, I extended the faucet along to go through the end of June. And that is going to give people a total of like 10 weeks. So some people are knitting multiple faucets, which I highly recommend. Um, if you're knitting a wee faucet or even the smallest size in the regular sized faux set, you can sometimes get two sweaters out. Like if you have three skeins of yarn, you can get two sweaters out of that if they're small. So um, it's just not a very big sweater. And with three colors, like you just have plenty of yarn. You don't need more. So uh, that's nice too. And you can also use the option of holding a, a fingering weight yarn with a lace weight. And I've made scrappy faux sets before. I know I've showed that one before. And that's like my favorite one. So, well, until I made this one <laughs> in all of my favorite colors. Um, I also did the Mother's Day set, which that has been in the works for a long time. And um, Ray over at Longleaf Bags, this bag is mine. I got to keep one. Uh, and it just is so beautiful. Like it's this beautiful and I, they're all sold out. I'm sorry if you didn't get one. If you did, thank you so much. They sold out in less than 24 hours. I was so pleased that you guys just love them so much and it just filled me with joy. Uh, but I picked out this watercolor fabric and, and Ray expertly sewed these bags. They are really, really pretty. Um, it's got a really nice zipper and like a beautiful fabric on the inside with pockets. And there was the Mother's Day skein. I don't have any of those left, but 
Uh, the Mother's Day skein is similar to the May color, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute, but both of them have a bougie background. So the Mother's Day skein was just like this bougie, and then it had a speckle that's kind of reminiscent of this. And it's just super pretty. It's just all super pretty with a couple of mini skeins on there. Um, and I also brought out my spring hand balm. Sorry, I've got some bright lights here, which is in the Earl Grey scent. Isn't that pretty? So when I do these labels, I design them myself, but I did not do the artwork. You can, you can purchase artwork and I just love this one in particular. It's just very tea and there's a little teapot around the side there. But these are Earl Grey scented. It's the Bergamo, which is some kind of plant. Um, it's very light, it's kind of citrusy. It smells like Earl Grey tea. Uh, and the, the stick is nice because you can put it on without getting your other hand greasy. So if you just want it like on your hand tops, that's nice. A lot of people like the stick for that reason. Um, I am more of a tub girl myself. I like to get a lot and just, you know, I put it on my elbows and I put it on my feet and I use it everywhere. I've got a tub by my bed. I've got one in my purse. I'm a big fan of the balm. So anyway, these are also available that you can get them by themselves now too, if you want. Um, okay, do I have the necklace on here? I don't even think I mentioned the necklace. So I also, in the midst of all this other stuff, I did a sale on the necklace, the Joy Stitch Marker necklace, which has these little light bulb um, safety pin with a little cute uh, wood circle. I just think they're so cute. And they go with my earrings and they're just so cute, right? Just so modern and trendy, I think anyway. Uh, but I wanted to have a sale on these because I know a lot of people have said to me like, I want one, but the price point is more than I wanna spend on it, which I totally get. So there is a sale. Uh, I believe, I'm gonna probably put up a little slide here in case I get it wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's 20% off with the code MOMJOY, you can get the necklace for 20% off. And there's two colors, it comes in gold or silver, uh, and the wood is a different color for the gold and the silver too. In my humble opinion, the silver, is it's less shiny, and so it's a little bit more casual. Um, I wear the silver when I'm a little more casual, and I wear the gold when I'm a little more dressy. So, but it's nice to have a stitch marker. And I actually used one the other day. <clears throat> I totally like forgot I had it on. And I was like, Gigi, I need a stitch marker. She's like, mom, you're wearing the necklace. I was like, oh, <laughs> I like made the necklace. I mean, you think I would like think of that? <clears throat> okay. Anyway, the progress in shop news, like there's so many things have happened. It's been a lot of things. <clears throat> I was a few days late with May's color of the month, but it is available now, and what do you think? So, this one is a mixture of bougie and fontine, not a lot. April had a lot of fontine, so don't be all like, geez, Devin, it's enough with the fontine, because you can never have enough hot pink. You just cannot, but it's only a little. There's just a little bit of fontine in there, um, and thistle. So it's very May. Isn't this very May? I think so. And it also goes with the Mother's Day skein because I kind of wanted them all to go together. In case you wanted them all, then they could all go together and Poirot. Look at that combination. Oh my gosh. So we've got the May color, Bougie, Fontaine, Thistle, and Poirot. That's this mixture. Oh, can we just look at it some more? <laughs> but you can see we have our, our saturated colors, which is mainly Poirot. And then we have our light gray. You know, if we were gonna take a black and white picture, we'd have our light gray and thistle, our dark gray in Fontaine and our white in Bougie. So when you when you add that contrast in, you, you're gonna get good art, that's good colors. I've had some questions about that and I'll just answer them real quick because I'm thinking about it. Um, Cause people will say, well, Devin, what about low contrast? Like what if I wanna knit my sweater my Vesper sweater in the same color fingering weight as my mohair, won't I get like a low contrast stripe? Definitely, I think that's amazing. I have a knitter who is doing that with Trinket, which I think is a very bold choice 
because Trinket is very bright. And we were messaging about it. And she's like, do I want that? Like I picked it, but is that what I want? And I was like, it's a lot of yellow. Like, do you like yellow that much? And she was like, yep. And I was like, well, there you go. <laughs> I can't wait to see it. It's going to be amazing. So low contrast is a design choice. And it doesn't mean your colors are not going to be good. Um, and even Sarah, who asked me about her three shades of pastel for her faux set, which was not, like the opposite of what I recommended, her sweater turned out great. It just it's okay to deviate from the black, white, and the gray, but that is a good, it's like when you're taking a photograph, the rule of threes, you don't always have to follow that rule, but if you're not sure what to do, follow the rule. Does that make sense? Like if you're artistic and you like to play with these other ideas and see what you get, do it. But if you're like, mm, I don't know, is this the right thing? What, what do I pick? because some people just cannot pick color to save themselves and that's okay. Like you should seek out people who are good at it or just general rules of how to pick color like a black, a white, and a gray. Go back and watch my other podcasts if you have no idea what I'm talking about. I feel like I talk about that every week. Um, okay, so with regard to May's color, I have it right now in the Frankfurt Fingering which is a great base. It's a multi-purpose yarn. You can use it to make absolutely anything you want in a fingering weight. Um, the Dubrovnik DK is up as a pre-order. Again, back up at the mill. I'm going to order a billion skeins when that comes back in. And they're going to be like, oh, we're out again. Devin got them all. <laughs> so uh, I will have like DK out the wazoo after they arrive at my house in mid-May. Hopefully, if all goes according to plan. I mean, I don't control every piece of the, the supply chain, but that's the plan as of now. But you can pre-order them in this color if you want. I also had some requests for April's color because uh, I don't have that up anymore as DK because I've sold out of it. But some people ordered it when it was still April, and so I'm going to be dying more. So if you want it, just let me know and I'll put it back up. And I will get everyone who wanted April you know, all in one go, and then April will go by the wayside and we will have May and then June, obviously. <laughs> I need more coffee. <sighs> so I don't know if this happens with you, but when I finish a project, like with my faux set, I'm, I feel very uneasy I have two design projects that I'm working on right now, the Diggory Tee and um, the Shasta sweater, but those are very big design projects and they're both at a place where they require more than mindless knitting. Like that's not where they are. They require my full attention. And I clearly did not have attention to give to those this week. So when I finished the faux set, I had this like deep feeling of unease like, what am I going to do with myself now? You know, because there's a million things to do, but I'm talking about when I'm riding in the car or when I sit down at the end of the day to watch half an hour of TV before I go to bed or when my daughter is on her, you know, her Zoom call with her teacher, her tutor. Like, I need to have a mindless project to work on. So I went back to the idea that I had a couple months ago about having a sock on the needles. Uh, and so I cast on a sock. Isn't this so pretty? This yarn was dyed by Holly over at Mystery Mouse Yarn Company. And this sock set is called Red Wall. I got this from her at the retreat. Whoops, got a bunch of needles in there. So this is the main color and it's, it's very, you really can see it better when it's knit, but it's very tonal. Isn't it so pretty? It's like a red and yellow and she just did such a good job. And the same with this little mini skein. It has so many other colors in there. It's just not a flat, boring skein of yarn, which is what you get with hand dyes. That's what I love about hand dyed yarn. If you want a flat sweater or a flat finished object, go and get, you know, whatever, Cascade 220. It's going to be a flat color. In my humble opinion, hand dyed yarn is just, it's, it, it costs more for a reason. 
uh, what you get is just so, so pretty. Uh, and that's not to say that, you know, there's no place for Cascade 220 or whatever it is, whatever flat yarn, you know, you like. It's There is a place for it, and I think it does look good in certain applications. But whenever I see a hand dye, I just think it is so, so beautiful. So anyway, I cast on this sock, and I had a couple reasons for doing that. Uh, it's a mindless knit, which I love. I really like these colors, and I've been wanting to knit some socks with it. Uh, also, I am going to have, I don't have yet, but I am going to have Nitty McPurly sock rulers in the shop. Look how beautiful these are. These were made for me by SweetMountainCrafts.com in Cody, Wyoming, and they are awesome. Um, Carista made me a video of how to use this ruler. Um, but the only reason I haven't released it yet is because I've been working on the packaging and I want to have a detailed video of how to use it. So um, a sock ruler is really amazing and there are a bunch of them out there. I didn't really realize that, but there are a lot, there's a lot of value to using a sock ruler. So there will be coming a video on how to use one. Uh, and also I will be having these in my shop coming up in the near future. So. I wanted to have that sock for those two reasons. It'll help me when I'm making my video. So uh, it's nice to have a sock ruler to measure the leg of the sock, but it's more for the foot. And um, it's nice to be able to knit socks for people who are not with you because you have a sock ruler and you can easily um, use it to check the length of the foot of the sock. So I'm, I've decided to knit these for Gigi and I didn't tell her yet. But Gigi is the only knitworthy member of my family. Um, and I, they would all admit that they are not knitworthy. Um, they just don't appreciate hand knit things. So, uh, and Gigi is a sock lover and a pajama lover. She has a certain pair of socks that she wears all the time, like a certain type. It's not just one pair of socks, but uh, you know, I think that she would really appreciate a pair of like pajama socks that she could wear with her, her comfies. So that is what I'm currently working on. Okay, that was a lot. Moving right along to the topic of the week. So the other day I was homeschooling my two youngest kids and I was cold. And so I went into the mudroom to see if anybody had left a sweater or maybe I had left a, something that I could put on because I was cold. And I found my daughter's school sweaters. And so I grabbed one and I put it on and I noticed this situation. So this is a store-bought sweater, okay? And it's a school sweater, so it feels like a seat belt. You know what I mean? Like it's made to hold up. And these sweaters were not, we didn't buy them. They were handed down to us. So school sweaters, I mean, gosh, they're like $60 or something new. And so as a school, we wear them as much as we can and we pass them down. And the sweater is still in great shape except for these cuffs. But I put this on and I was like, oh my gosh, are they wearing it like this? They don't wear the sweaters all that often, but they wear them sometimes. So my initial thought was, now this is seamed here because like I said, it's a store-bought sweater. My initial thought was to remove the seam stitches, unravel just a little bit of the cuff and re either re-knit it or just bind it off a little shorter. But I had to scrap that idea because it is just too tiny. I do not have needles small enough to do that. I, I can't work it tight enough. So I thought, well, what am I gonna do? Um, and I watched some videos, I did some research on ways to fix frayed cuffs, and uh, I'll show you what I came up with right here. All right, so here we are with this problem. And um, I decided that the best way to handle it would be to essentially hem it. Now, as you know, I am the Bob Ross of knitting, or I fancy myself to be, and uh, I am not coming at you from a position of expertise, but 
<clears throat> more as one who seeks and hopefully can find some good solutions along the way. So I have trimmed off the craziness and all I'm going to do here, and let me just turn that sleeve inside out because I think we'll be able to do it a little bit better if it is inside out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some, something got on this thread. I don't even know what it is. Good grief. Anyway, this is some heavy duty Guterman thread. Uh, and I'm going to use that because I do expect this sweater to last a lot longer. I have, uh, it's a girl sweater and I have three girls who will be going to this school. So I'd like it to last a long time. So here I am <clears throat> threading this needle and I'm going to tie a knot. Now I decided to do it in a contrast color, both so that you could see it and because I don't expect this to show at all. So did not practice this ahead of time. Not an expert. Just trying stuff out and seeing what works. Okay, so let's go ahead. I don't quite want that much, that much fold. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in here, tuck that knot, and I'm just going to grab kind of the back, the inside of that stitch, so that you won't see it from the right side. All right, and I'm just going to do that all the way around. I hope for the best. Happy little stitches. <laughs> I'm just going to only grab this side of it. All right. Ugh. Why does this happen? <laughs> Bob Ross never had to deal with things like this. Things always worked for him, although his show was slightly larger budget. <laughs> I say slightly because PBS. All right, I'm going to fix that and do the rest, and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, I'm actually still in the in the midst of it, but look at this. If I, and I'm getting these knots every time. Does anybody know how to not make that happen? I feel like it's because it's the heavy-duty thread. But I have found that if I pull it really tightly, oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, look, you don't even see it on the inside. A little bit right there because that's the seam. Oh, no, no, look at that. Oh, if I pull it really tightly, you don't see it anywhere. All right, hold on. All right, it's not perfect, but truth be told, I did not try all that hard. <laughs> all right, let me show it to you on the right side. That looks great, right? You don't see it at all. And look at that, no phrase. Still kind of stretchy. I'd call that a win. Now the question is, when am I going to do the other sleeve? <laughs> okay, so with the idea of fraying on our minds, I thought we would look at the word fray. So the word fray as a verb means to wear off by rubbing, and it comes from about 1400 from the old French, frayer or froyer, to rub against or scrape. Um, from the Latin fricare, to rub or rub down, in the intransitive sense of to ravel out, like fabric, which is what we're talking about here, that comes from 1721. But if you think about, you know, why does something fray? It's because it's been worn down, right? So the noun of a fray, meaning a frayed place in a garment, is from the 1620s. So it'd be like a place that's worn down. Now, the word fray, referring to like a fight or a brawl, is from the early 15th century, and that is a shortening of the word affray, which is etymologically primary to the word afraid. Isn't that interesting? A little word lesson. All right, moving on to your comments. All right. I apologize that I'm reading the comments from two weeks ago because I did not have a show last week, but here they are. 
Uh, Danielle Sorensen says, I love your healthy skepticism about the Van Gogh article. I mean, people could claim whatever they want. Like, I am proving this thing. Are you really though? I don't know. Logic exists and there are certain logical steps that it is are required to get to a conclusion. And you can't just, you know, claim stuff. <laughs> it just doesn't work. All right. Kelly Olguin said, I jumped onto the faux set along. I went onto your website for the yarn. Of course, they were all sold out, but I did the pre-order and thank you. You dyed the yarn out of stock and I'm getting my yarn any day. I only ordered last week. Your customer service is fantastic. Can't wait to start. Well, that is so nice of you, Kelly. I really try. I don't like when you have to wait for your yarn. Uh, I try and get it out as fast as I can. If I ever miss something, like please let me know. Um, one thing I wanted to mention, it just made me think of it, is like I get an email from my website every time someone purchases something. For example, you know, a million people downloaded the Vesper sweater, so I had a million emails. And if somebody sends me an important email in the midst of that, like if I miss it, um, I, it just ta sometimes takes me a day to go through and get rid of all of those extraneous emails that I don't need to read so that I can get to your important email. But if it's a few days and I haven't responded, or if you've reached out to me in any way and I have not responded, I am not ignoring you. I just missed it. So feel free to send me another one and just bump it up in my box like, hello, here I am. I think you missed it. So I always want to have good customer service. And if I ever don't, that's not on purpose. <laughs> just, you know, get my attention and I'm happy to do whatever it is that you need from me. Mystery Mouse, the lovely dyer of this yarn, says, I am so excited about the faux set along. It's such a fun and interesting pattern. Definitely worth doing a few times or even a lot of times. I'm so glad you're getting into Agatha Christie. Really, if you're a Sherlock Holmes fan, it was just a matter of time. I love your Poirot color. Purple to me is the color of mystery. Yes, definitely. Isn't it? Like I just had it in my head like that's what it is. Somebody asked me, um, is Poirot really as saturated as it looks on the screen? Yes, it is extremely saturated. In fact, I feel like here with all this light shining on it, you can really see the purple, but it is, uh, it's a very, very saturated color. <laughs> Julie Brown. Julie. Her comment cracks me up. I don't know how people who I don't know in real life know me so well, but Julie does. <clears throat> she says, oh my goodness, Devin, another new color. I wish you would have asked me when you said you were keeping it to 12 because I said to myself, no way will she stop at 12. Why? Because you're just too fun and creative. You can't stop those juices, sister. You just can't. So now we're at 14 with the color of the month each month. Hmm. All I can do is say I can hardly wait to see what 15 and 16 look like. Well, Julie, they're coming. You know that they are. I've got them up here. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> oh gosh, these comments are so good. Weather, all kinds of weather. People all over. Like it's spring and so some people have snow and some people are sitting on the porch knitting and other people have rain. Right now it's blue skies, but I, we're expecting thunderstorms all day, so you never know. Kara Overman said, I found yarn at the North Texas Yarn Crawl this past weekend, and I have the ribbing cast on for the faux set. I had the faux set pattern from several months ago, but I hadn't found the yarn or time to cast it on. Well, all you needed was a knit along, Kara. Oh, Chicken Lady Fiber Art says, Michael Scott jokes always make me laugh. Me too. Me too. There's something about Steve Carell. He is just so funny. Uh, might have to jump on the make up, jump on the make along bandwagon. You'll have to let me know what you decide, Chicken Lady. Oh, here's a good question. And um, Peggy Flowers. Someone else emailed me this, or I get messages from all different places, and people have their name and their Instagram name, and sometimes I don't know if it's the same person. But Peggy Flowers says, Devin, have you made the faux set out of a cotton or a cotton blend? Also, does the pattern include directions for longer sleeves? I am past the age where I wear short sleeves. Love the pattern. I'm going to start at the end first. I get it. I understand. I, too, am self-conscious about my arms because when I go like this, I've got the blah, 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 and I don't like it either. But I do not want to be uncomfortable. And I think that 
even if you're not happy with your arms, don't be hot. Like just don't. It's okay to wear short sleeves. Don't be uncomfortable. But if you want to wear longer sleeves, you absolutely can. Uh, lots of people have done a longer sleeve version. Maybe not lots. At least a couple of people have put longer sleeves on it. Look on Ravelry. There are a ton of projects on Ravelry and you can read through. And if someone has put their notes in there, what I would do if you want to do longer sleeves is do the sleeves last, knit your sweater the way you want it, put and just try it on a lot so that you can see, well, do I need to decrease here? Um, I, some people have even done a full length sleeve on the, on the faux set and just do your decreases where you feel like you need them. You're not going to need a lot because it's kind of a fitted sweater as it is, but, um, just try it on a lot and decrease as needed is those are my, you know, tips on what to do there. As for a cotton or a cotton blend, I personally don't knit with cotton a lot. A hundred percent cotton, I would say definitely not. It's too hard on my hands. Cotton has no give the way that wool does, and it's just too hard on my hands to knit with it. Now that said, from Paige, hi Paige, uh, at the retreat, I bought a cotton linen blend, which still might not have give. I haven't knit anything with it yet, but um, I, I like the finished product better. Cotton for me is a little crunchy in the end, but if you blend it with something, uh, linen, it definitely has a softer feel in the end. If it were blended with wool, you know, it would still have a little bit of give in it. So no, I have not. And if I were to, I would choose a blend, but you could definitely, if you made it out of cotton, it would be cooler in the summer. So it's a perfect, you know, spring, slightly cool sweater. And that said, I wore it today over a dress and I was too cold. So I changed to accommodate my own comfort. Um, oh, Susan Smith just started her second faux set. It is so fun seeing everyone's color picks. I know. Uh, there's, you can follow the hashtag, hashtag faux set along 2023 if you wanna see everyone else's faux sets uh, and tag your sweater with that if, if you want to um, so everyone can see yours too. Okay, I could read comments all day long because they are so fun and there's a million of them and I just love it. Okay, so knitting fantasies. I am not on Ravelry very often, um, but I was on it to watch the swift meteoric rise of my Vesper pattern in popularity. And so I admit, I did go and look at that. Um, and so while I was on Ravelry, I found this one in particular beautiful vest and I went back and looked for it and it has fallen off of the top of the charts and I couldn't find it again and I ran out of time and I, it was really cute. And if I find it, I'll show it to you. Um, but I, I was looking, I was like, well, what's on Ravelry that I like? And I found two patterns that are perfect for summer by Kadri, C-A-I-D-R-E-E, -E, who's also on Etsy. So I am linking them to Etsy below, uh, but you can get them either place. So I didn't find the vest that I wanted to find, but it was so cute. Gosh, it was adorable. I will find it and show it to you because it's just so cute. But these two patterns that I wanted to highlight by Kadri, and she has a great aesthetic, so basic, so plain, with really nice finishing. Uh, just really, really pretty patterns. The first one is the Home Camisole, and this is knit, hers is a light DK cashmere. So you could use the yarn that she recommends. You could use a regular DK. You could use, it would be amazing, in a fingering weight held double with a lace weight. If I were gonna knit it, I think that's what I would do. Although, you know, it might make it slightly less summery, I don't know, that fuzz, I feel like adds a little bit of warmth that you might not want held together. You know, like if you're wearing a single layer of the fuzzy lace weight yarn, I think that would be good for summer. This is just me talking, it's just my own opinion. But um, anyway, I thought it was really, really pretty. I love the I-cord edging all around it and it's just so pretty. And another top that she has is called the Soho Top. Uh, the first one's called a camisole, the second one's called a top, but they're really kind of the same thing. And this one is in a garter stitch, and this is a fingering weight held double or a worsted weight. 
And her patterns come in so many sizes, like 10 sizes, four or five languages. She just really has the corner on, you know, getting, every, it's very inclusive, like anybody who wants to can knit these patterns. So here's what happened. I actually do have knitting stories that you guys have sent me, but I had this really great story to share with you. So <clears throat> mine is kind of timely, so I'm gonna go ahead and share this now rather than putting it off. <clears throat> Excuse me. So uh, I have a podcaster who I watch daily, and this particular podcaster is just kind of, is helpful to me in a living your life kind of way. And one of the things that she does is she gets up early and she prays every morning and she exercises every morning. And I was like, I can do that. I get up early anyway. So I decided I am gonna do, I'm gonna pray for half an hour and then I'm gonna exercise for half an hour. And I can totally do that. And on a day where I would sleep in, like this is the time that I would just be sleeping. like. Why don't I just get my butt out of bed and do something worthwhile? So my husband and I normally get up at 4.45 and we're to work at five. So I decided from five to 5.30, I'm gonna pray. Then from 5.30 to six, I'm gonna exercise. So I, I'm, this is pretty new to me. I've been doing it like two weeks. So I had a crisis of Dubrovnik DK. It was a Dubrovnik DK debacle and it came from my faucet along being just way more successful than I expected it to be. Way more people wanted yarn than I expected. So I have a lot, but it was just gone. Like I just got, everyone wanted it. And so I, I went to the mill and they were sold out. And so I called the number and as a, a wholesaler, you kind of get good information on how to talk to people. And so a lady picked up and she was in the car with her children. Like I just felt a, an extreme sense of, I get it because that is how my life is. My business is also run all the time. People email me and they're like, I'm so sorry to bother you on a weekend. I'm like, whatever, I'm always working. <laughs> you know, like this is what I do. And this lady was just the same. And she was like, I am so sorry that we are out of your very favorite DK base because everyone loves it. It's just so great. And as I said in my Instagram post, um, I get my bases from several different places because I picked the ones I liked the most. And this particular mill is a small, smaller kind of up and coming mill. And they don't work in gigantic quality in quantities like the bigger mills do. And so, you know, she said, everyone loves it and we've sold out, but we've, you know, we've got it on airplanes and it's coming and we're going to get it for you. And she goes, but you know, you're trying to buy it in the bulk wholesale way. But if you go in and you buy single individual skeins, you can see how many we have of those. Like it's not the most convenient packaging, but I had already sold the DK. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I just was not, I was not prepared. I was caught off guard. Like I can't, I've told people I will send it to them within a week and I have to do that. Like I said, I would, so I have to. So she says, okay, so go in there, you know, and, and, and order these individual skeins. And so I go in and I see how many I can get. Like you enter this, you can't get it. You enter this, you can. And I'm just eking it up there. Like how many can I get? Um, and so I get a lot and I'm trying to do the math. Like, do I have enough to cover the ones that people have already ordered? And so I'm worried. I am concerned. I'm nervous. And I get up the next morning and I'm praying. And one of my favorite prayer books, it's actually a series of books called In Conversation with God. And it's like eight books, I think. And there's one, there's like a several pages of reading for every single day of the year. It's a great, great companion. It just so happened that that day, the reading was about letting God handle it. And just saying, what good will come of me worrying about it. None. No good will come of me worrying about it. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to say, God, please fix this for me. And then I'm not going to worry. And so that's what I did. I, and I just said, Lord, please take this from me and fix it. And that's it. And I just let it go. 
So I went through then after that, I, I went through and I looked at what was ordered and I looked at what blank yarn I had. And at first I thought that it was going to be tight. But then I went down to my dye studio and I had all this yarn that I had dyed extra in all the colors that I needed. And there it was, I had already dyed it because I had dyed extra because those colors were popular and I was dying extra. And so even with that, I was like, okay, you know, I, this is like, it's just all giving a buffer to the numbers. Like, it's like, okay, is this all gonna work out? Uh, and then after that, I, I never leave yarn in the dye pots. I never do that. But I guess I had left it to cool and I forgot about it for a day. And I went back and there was yarn in the dye pots and DK yarn just kept appearing. I had yarn on the drying rack. I had yarn in the dye pots. I had the lady at the mill helping me out with these single skeins, all with zero worry on my part. It all just came. And so I was thinking, so I dye yarn in groups of five. So whenever I dye a pot, I have all of my recipes gauged for 500 grams of yarn. And so I was thinking, you know, I might have to go through and redo all the math to dye uh, one skein or to dye nine skeins or to dye, you know, 17 skeins or whatever of the colors that I needed. And I'm like, okay, that's extra work and time. And so, but I, I wasn't worrying, I let it go. And when they all, when it all shook out, all the yarn needed and all the yarn provided, when it all shook out, not only did I have yarn to cover everyone who had ordered up until the point when I said, okay, at this point, I'm three or four weeks out into shipping this yarn. Like at that point, those people knew what they were getting into, but I had to ship the yarn up until that point. Not only did I have enough, but I had enough that I could dye almost every single pot as a group of five. Meaning that if I needed 17 skeins of a color, I could just dye 20 and I'd have the three extra. So it was a total moment of God will take care of it. You don't need to worry about the problem. All you need to do is trust and have faith and say, God, you can take care of it. There's nothing I can do. Worrying is not going to get me any closer to the end goal, which is success, right? Worrying's not gonna get me any closer to that, so I'm just gonna give it to you and we're gonna let it go. And that's what happened and it was so great. So, did I say everything? I think I said everything. I didn't like, sometimes I write an outline so I don't forget things, but I didn't this time. Um, but anyway, the DK will ship out. I think everyone, and I'm sure that everyone who has a pre-order in knows that it's coming mid to late May. I'm saying that because I don't exactly know you know, I don't control the airplane or I don't control anything until the yarn comes to me. And then I can do the turnaround pretty quickly because I'll be, I'll be on it at that moment. But anyway, it was a great story. It was just awesome. I put it on Instagram and uh, it was great to see everyone's response to that because God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Enjoy your knitting and I will see you back here next time. Bye knitters.